are these people? I'm bringing a story from our boy here, the Golden Monarch, because uh, he wrote something that's relevant to, to what we're talking about um, with regard to crypto and how crypto has now made its way into the 2024 election cycle. Mm -hmm. We also a like it. Ways. Yep. So let's get to the first part of that story, which was a Common Dreams article uh, through Public Citizen. And I used to love Public Citizen. It was started by Ralph Nader. They have gone complete TDS shit lib for the most part, but they still do report on the money. And I saw this in Common Dreams last week, and I'm just like, ooh. And I really didn't hear too many people talking about this and the influence that it could potentially buy over the election cycle. So mm -hmm. today, Public Citizen released a new report revealing that the cryptocurrency sector is exploiting the Citizens United ruling to an unprecedented degree, dwarfing direct corporate spending by big oil and other corporate sectors in the 2024 elections. Again, most people haven't heard of this because it hasn't been talked about. But the cryptocurrency companies like Coinbase and Ripple are able to spend over $100 million to silence crypto's critics and elevate its backers, okay, embodies everything that's wrong with the Supreme Court's disastrous Citizens United decision. And I agree with that. That's the director of research. I can't hear Ripple without thinking of Sanford and Son. So that's you know. XRP. <laughs> that, that, that's their their symbol yeah. is xrp ripple all right corporations can't sure. vote right but the sole reason crypto is a hot button topic in this election cycle is that crypto businesses are spending eye-popping sums to make themselves impossible to ignore they're buying favor mm. just like they bought their way into um booby kennedy's campaign it's it appears um i don't know yeah I don't, I mean, I was told that there's a connection between Nicole Shanahan and the crypto world. I have not personally seen it myself, but I certainly could see that mm -hmm. and see that being an influence. All right. But, you know, they're spending these this kind of top findings of the report, okay, which analyzes federal election data provided by OpenSecrets.org, which is a, a nonprofit organization that just tracks the money. They track federal election spending through the FEC, and they track expense uh, filings. Crypto corporations are by okay. far the dominant corporate political spenders in 2024, as nearly half of all corporate money contributed during this year's elections came from crypto backers and that's again 248 million dollars let me ask again to those to those green party supporters and i i love you how much does that federal funding five percent get you money wise um i think it was what 100 no i was i heard it was 20 million according to brie joy gray 20 20 million. Super, okay. I'm glad you re looked it up because I forgot what it was. $248 million just from the crypto industry. And we know that APAC has already dumped. Thank you. That APAC has also already dumped over $100 million into this cycle. That was another article that I was going to bring that from Common Dreams I decided not to because I have too many already. But. Direct corporate election spending at this scale is unprecedented. We've got people buying our elections more than we ever have. Crypto's total spending in the mm. past three election cycles combined, which was still a lot at $129 million, all right, that already amounted to 15% of all known corporate contributions since Citizens United in 2010, and crypto has only been a thing really since 2020. I mean, it's been around. The most election of our lifetime. It's it's been a thing. Now, they're buying both sides, of course, because crypto is an equal opportunity briber. Um, but since Citizens United, the crypto corporations are now second in total election-related spending, trailing only the oil and gas companies, fossil fuel, which has spent 176 million over the past 14 years. But now that's been surpassed. I mean, now you're talking 248 million. They're just going to blow right past this number. 
right? That's 73 mm. million just from Coke, the Coke brothers. Again, crypto is wrecking the Coke brothers even in, and dwarfing them. We haven't even talked yeah. about Leonard Leo and how they're using that 1.6 billion to buy off federal judgeships and to influence the Supreme Court. Guys, there's money that we're up again. Now, this is where I think that Golden Monarch was actually ahead of this even before this, because I sent him this. The crypto sector's Fair Shake Pack, and we're going to look into that a little bit, and its affiliates have received nearly $114 million directly from corporate backers, far more than any other outside spender this cycle. So now you've got like, it's almost like a union. Um, it's a a collective of all of the crypto industry moguls and companies that form this pack, this fair shake pack, so that crypto gets a fair shake with Congress. It's so, so draconian. Fair shake's corporate backing is unprecedented. Though unlimited cor corporate contributions have been enabled since 2010 by Citizens United, this newcomer is already second only to the super PAC dedicated to electing Republicans to the Senate in terms of corporate money received. <laughs> that super PAC, uh, which is the Senate Leadership Fund, has received nearly $119 million directly from corporations over the past 14 years. Largely, of course, again, fossil fuel or oil and gas, but many other sectors, including crypto, tobacco, for-profit prisons. All the wonderful people in this world, right? Yeah. The worst people you know are all behind this shit. Oh, yeah, by the way, it's all, there's also a huge Zionist tie on top of that. And Golden Monarch has written about that extensively on his substack at goldenmonarch.substack.com. Before I get to the Monarch's piece, I want to first make a, an appeal here that we are very close now. I started to, I have just about all the, the, the Zago illustrations of all the Indie Media Award honorees. And if you can make any contribution that can help that, uh, we want to get that taken care of and paid off so that we can help Chanda, we can help Angel get a new machine. We got a lot of things we'd really like to do, and we need your choice, you know, your your help and your funding to do it because we don't take ads. We don't, you know, we're we're solely user funded and monetized. So uh, really appreciate your your help and your support there. Um, as as the Accord Lord says in the immortal words of Misty Winston, We're fucked. yes, I I think in a way we kind of are. Um, yeah, Monarch's going to talk about Katie Porter was essentially defeated due to sheer crypto, you know, doing crypto ads targeting her. She obviously sucks, but you know the overkill went through, and she got they put someone in much worse. For sure, a corporatist who's down to the bank, who's down with the banks. This fascinated me. I didn't even know who this woman was. And you probably don't either. Because she's a senator from Wyoming. Why the hell would anybody care who she is? Do you know who she is, Reef? No. Mm -mm. I figure no. So Cynthia Lummis does not represent the American people. Lummis? This is Lummis, Lummis, Hummus. Uh, Loomis, mm -hmm. I think it's Loomis, I think it's pronounced Loomis, but Senator Cynthia doesn't represent the American people, especially the state of Wyoming, and backing her is none other than large donors, including pro-Israel lobbyists. What a surprise. But before discussing her history with the Zionist Bitcoin, let us re recap how she's financially backed and what political positions uh, she's put herself in over the years. So... Monarch pulls from open secrets, okay, just where the large individual, large contributions and packs. So 2.5 million effectively of the $3 million she's raised has come from either herself. I mean, it has come from either packs or large individuals uh, contributions, which are wealthy people. Uh, that's, that's basically who she serves. All right. That's again, 77.2% of her, of her funding comes from that. All right. Uh, she also gets from the Senate Conservatives Fund, the Club for Growth, Sinclair. We know that they're highly conservative. And then you get into multi coin capital, 21,000. And now these are the people who buy her off for cheap. 
You can see what he says. As you can see from these two images, Lummis is like like any other politician in Congress is bought by her donors, right? Strangely, Open Secrets doesn't disclose her previous source of funds before 2019. I don't really know why. That's kind of weird. But here's what she does, and here are her positions. The four key takeaways is that she, one, opposes BDS, right, which is boycott, divestment, and sanctions against Israel for their treatment of the Palestinian mm -hmm. people in apartheid, which we are legally bound to support, though they are passing so ordinances. APAC cash. Right. I'm okay. sure it's all over it. She opposed the Iran nuclear deal back in 2015. All right. She's supported funding for Israel's Iron Dome, as did, of course, the majority of Democrats and Republicans. And she currently supports the current level of U.S. aid to Israel. And I'll bet if given the opportunity, she would probably vote to increase it. So clearly, Lummis is a, st a staunch supporter of Israel, and anything the United States does must be to support Israel's endless wars and genocide against Palestinians and other neighbor countries such as Syria, Lebanon, Iran, etc. All right, he puts an article from the American Jewish Congress vaguely stating her record and public positions which are important to the Jewish community, and precisely which Jewish community is the article referring to, Judaism, or more predictably, Zionism, well, we know that it's the latter because they conflate these two things constantly. And anti-Zionist Jews don't get representation at this level, especially because she stated that she opposes BDS right there. We know that, you know, what that, what that means. Right? So as a member of the House, she opposed like that. So those are the four points right there. All right, then we have, who's Will Cole, her son-in-law? Oh, he, he's involved. How? Because Will Cole is currently the head, head of product at ZapRite, but former the chief mm. product officer of Unchained, which is a crypto play, <laughs> but yeah. former VP of product of Stack Overflow. That's a tech company. All right, so he says Unchained is where the focus will be because a while ago from... July 25th through 27th, earlier this summer, the Bitcoin Native Financial Services Company was a moderate sponsor of the Bitcoin National Conference, or what Monarch liked to refer to as Republican National Committee 2.0 for short, given the sheer presence of politicians yep. and billionaires, including Senator Cynthia Lummis herself, of course. Now, I don't know if you're aware, but Wyoming is actually a central hub for crypto research and crypto bros. Probably because the land is super cheap out there, so they can buy a ton of it, put up all kinds of server farms, and uh, electricity yeah. is probably cheap and everything else. So they they just went to the cheapest place they could go. And Jackson Hole, Wyoming, has now become like a destination with $10 million homes. Now, yeah, he says, a rancher turned capitalist Zionist with laser eyes, not my hero. And that's a link to Roll Call, all right, where... All right. Servo? From Heard on the Hill, how Cynthia, a rancher and grandmother, was crowned the Senate's queen of crypto. What do you mean? Mm. So if Unchained, Will Cole, and Cynthia Lummis are all working together behind the scenes, what does this say about the interests of the American people? Nothing whatsoever. Right? So we mm. add in Lummis's Zionist positions on Israel, and you'll see that she's heavily reliant on the crypto industry and Wall Street to spread her donors' propaganda. And by the way, Lummis is the first crypto yeah. owner in this. She's the first crypto owner in Senate's history. But how is that actually playing out in real time? Well, he feels like not a good look when you pair that her own baptism. Right Here's one summary from Roll Call. Saying, quote, the way she tells it, the astronomical return on investment wasn't what converted her into a Bitcoin evangelist who wears her faith on her Twitter profile. She, had, <laughs> uh -huh. she, she added laser yeah. eyes to her campaign's account's avatar last February. Oh, God. Right? And speaks in crypto's extremely online tongues. I, I mean, he'll say things like, I'm a hodler, right? Which is, hold on for dear life. O okay. You know, because they're... They're just never letting it go and never selling it. I don't know how it goes up in value if you just hold on to it forever and nobody ever transacts or trades with it. But yeah, well, that's a whole thing about 
how this whole thing is kind of a scam. Now, I haven't really talked about how it's a scam yet, but they're pumping money in. And we talked about this a year ago, and I, you know, I don't like to use this guy as an example, all right? But we talked about the guy um, who self-immolated outside, like, New York City courthouse or something, or outside the Trump trial, I think it was in July. And he yeah. had written extensively about how crypto was a Ponzi scheme. I think there was mm. a lot of questions about him and about the way that was written, but I think there was truth let out in there in that once the money is put into the crypto market, it is then immediately extracted by the banks. So there's literally no money behind the whole thing. And crypto people will the yell you, go. Is there? No, it's not. No, it's it's really we not. Can save the banks if then we can save the world. Well, they, that's what the crypto guys would like you to believe. But <laughs> but he said but 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 like Monarch says that as if mixing religion with politics was bad enough, what is up with these Zionists mixing re religion and blockchain technology? What's up with that? That's that is. <laughs> what is it? It's, yeah. it? Is that Keenan? Keenan from uh. Yeah. Nice from. Yeah, which shout out for was it Max put Keenan on the spot? Not yes. That long ago. Oh, he sure did, and he yeah. did not like it. Good for him. But she says, uh, having grown up as a rancher, we always said, well, buy more land. They're not making any more of it. And the rancher's dream was, I only want to own the land next door to me. She said, the concepts of property ownership have always been embedded in the way I grew up. She's a rank capitalist, of course. Just like land, Bitcoin yeah. is a store of value. It is property. It's a commodity. It's limited. There will only be 21 million Bitcoins ever produced, ever, until somebody decides to have them or make something that they put more value in than Bitcoin, like Ethereum or any other type of digital made up with nothing behind it currency other than the amount yeah. of power that it took to generate some digital key that people claim is worth something. Essentially, yeah. she's a petty crook, a thief who wants to legally have more ownership of somebody else's assets, be it land, Bitcoin, Lebanon, what a vile, disgusting, wicked Toys witch of the West. Bucks. Wicked, wicked witch of the Wyoming West. I love that. Well, Toys R Us Bucks, you know what? They could have issued their own crypto in like 2005 <laughs> and been way ahead yeah, of the dude. game and literally tokenized their entire not, product. Dude. Chuck E. Cheese Entertainment Cheese would have would have definitely been able well, to out NFT. Well, see, but they Toys R Us. See, they're technically already in on the NFT uh, on on the crypto grift because you have to go in. You can't put money in a Chuck E. Cheese machine. You have to go into because I took mm -hmm. my son there last week. You have to go to a machine, buy credits. <laughs> Either you buy credits that works yep. on a on a per game basis. Or you buy yep. amount of time for an unlimited amount of of gaming so in gotta, a certain gotta, amount of time. You got to trade in, in Chuck E. Cheese credits, dude. Yes, and then what uh, do you get for it? You get <laughs> you get prizes. We get we get yeah, yeah. we get prizes. All right. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, now some well, what's happening is she introduced a bill, the Senate Bill forty nine twelve, in the midst of being analyzed, the U.S. Strategic Bitcoin reserve. It's a Bitcoin reserve. It's going to be the biggest reserve in the history of Bitcoin. It's an even bigger scam than the blockchain itself and its pseudonym developers. And that's a whole other article that that, that uh, Monarch wrote about Satoshi Nakamoto and who is that? And another fascinating article. I could spend an hour just doing his show, doing his articles, and maybe we will one night. But the one politician... Well, something like that. It it is Bruce Willis is not involved, I promise. But the one <laughs> the one politician the one politician to benefit most from this reserve would be none other than the woman who proposed it to begin with, Senator Cynthia Lomas. What a surprise. As a reminder, she's yeah. pro Israel, pro Bitcoin for Christian Zionists, and corporations such as Unchained and undoubtedly bigger financial institutions such as BlackRock. It should come as no shock that establishment pro-Bitcoin articles and even prominent 
crypto bros and gals on social media never mention any history of her political positions, let alone the fact that the wicked witch of the Wyoming West isn't out there to serve the American people. She's out there to serve her donors. Hashtag free Palestine. Hashtag fuck Bitcoin. Goldenmonarch.substack.com. Goldenmonarchnews.substack.com. Look him up. Go check it out. Um, I've been a big fan of him writing ever since he started. All right. His latest one was about Binance. And I don't know if you've heard about Binance literally shutting down accounts belonging to Palestinians at the request and demand of Israel. That's crazy. All right. He talks here again about is Satoshi Nakamoto cryonically frozen and who exactly is Satoshi Nakamoto and whether it's somebody by the name of Hal Finney, Finney and who Hal Finney is and why it could potentially be that person. Another article Isn't about a guy in like hmm? Saved by the Bell. No, no, you're Feeny? thinking. Of, no, Mr. Mr. Feeney was in the Boy Meets World. <laughs> he was. The, That's it. He was the voice of, of Kit, Mike Michael, Michael Knight. Yes, the voice of Kit also mm. became a, a principal in a later show. Um, mm. And then a, a basic explanation early on about how Bitcoin has been taken over by the banks and by the Zionist movement as a way to launder money. So all of this money being pumped yeah. in by crypto companies into the 2024 election cycle is having a mega influence over um, what the narrative is about crypto, how people feel about it, um, mm -hmm. whether they're planning on regulating it once the election happens. I have a feeling not because it's looking like Republicans will end up taking the White House and probably the Senate, if not the House too. So they've been incredibly Bitcoin friendly and bought off by it as well as Zionist friendly. So I don't see them really being regulated, but with all the money they're making, and, and again, the whole thing is a Ponzi scheme in my mind, so they're just sucking all the money out of what's being put in. Somewhere, all of this money is being donated. And they're, what, what is happening, I believe it's being donated in the value of whatever they value that crypto to be. It's not, they're not actually handing a hundred... The they're not actually handing $119 million over to the campaigns. They're giving it to them in crypto, mm -hmm. letting them exchange it for whatever they, they want. And guess where all, where all those transactions happen? You know, because the campaigns need um, to cash out of their crypto and, and turn it into USDC or USDT, which then flips into US right. dollars and makes its way into a bank account. I mean, there is a multi-step process. Oh, yeah, by the way. There's massive fees that happen in between each one of these transfers. And who's yeah, getting those fees? People loads of money. Who's getting those gas fees, oh. those transfer fees? It's it's a real question. And I, I don't know who's getting it, but I guarantee you it's nobody poor. All right. Um, Yes, uh, Golden Monarch, Wyoming is, has become one of the capitals for, uh, and the University of Wyoming has been like Crypto Research Central. They also found a way to, to funnel it through education and through schools, and that's another way that they, that they launder it, is through nonprofit organizations that accept and deal with crypto. Um, Yes, Monarch, hashtag boycott Binance. Again, thank you for this article. Really, I'm so pumped that you started writing. And and this is good. Why so low on the screen? Uh, oh, you're talking about this? Talking about Because, yeah, that's that's weird. I don't, I don't know why. But if it's a big um, statement, a big chat, it, it it goes too high on the, on the thing. But anyway, uh, credit cards 2.0, well, sort of except that you can't transact nearly as easily with um, <clears throat> with crypto. And the fees are a lot higher than with credit cards. Now, if they decided to accept crypto everywhere, like they accept Visa everywhere, and you didn't really pay much of a fee, um, no, it, Sean, it's not at INN Substack. It's actually at goldenmonarchnews.substack.com only. Um, he's been publishing it there. 